Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Stories about crazy neighbors are always fun, aren't they? Our first story is one of those. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Getting my neighbor evicted. This happened about two years ago, so it might not include every detail. Our crazy neighbor, I'll call E.B. or Evil B, didn't know what living in a neighborhood was like. As soon as we moved into the house, a very nasty storm moved into the area. It blew down the fence between our yards, along with everyone else's in the neighborhood, and we thought it was no big deal. Within days, which is not enough time for a fence repair guy to get a quote, we had multiple papers on our door and in our mail demanding we put up a new fence. In Texas, state law states that shared fence, fence in between both of our yards, was shared property. So legally, we could have made EB pay for half the cost, but we didn't want to get in trouble with our new HOA, so we paid the entire cost. This behavior from EB only got worse. We've owned two dogs throughout our lives, so sometimes, like all dogs do, our dogs would bark at squirrels, rabbits, and other dogs. EB would constantly report us to the HOA for loud dogs, which is not an offense except for at late hours, which is not when this occurred. The HOA would warn us for a fine, to which we would reply, this is a city issue, so if you have a problem, go to the city. Of course, EB would not and only go to the HOA. It gets worse. This neighbor was mentally insane. EB would report us for getting leaves in their yard, and EB put up 10 cameras around the back of their house and even on the median fence, illegal without neighbor permission. It was all fine because it would not go anywhere, but the last time made me take revenge. A combination of dogs in a backyard tree left a grassless area in our backyard. We bought about two pallets of lawn turf so we could patch the area. Within a day of two wooden pallets of grass in our driveway, we get fined by the HOA for having them in our driveway. I go over to complain to our neighbor, who obviously reported it, who says, I'm not the one breaking the rules. This sets me off. EB had built a sidewalk in their backyard to walk their dog on, mentally insane, so I take up our city's legal documents to report it. After asking them to remove it, EB said they could build it because it was on their property. The city investigates, and after three days of filing the report, they demand EB to remove it because it was built without a permit. The city also cites EB for not owning two trees in their front yard, city law, to which EB claims their two shrubs were trees. I wasn't told everything by the city, but EB got evicted. They rented for multiple infractions and failing to remove illegally built sidewalks and patios. We now have a very nice family living next door who are happy to live the neighborhood life. This is all because my dog barked too loud. And our second story. Take out my trash? You got it. I work as a route driver in the beverage delivery industry, mainly targeting bars and convenience stores. Needless to say, after years of doing this, I've run into more examples of the Peter Principle than I can count. It seems like every town has one, that one manager who's either too trashy, too bitchy, or too incompetent to rise into the upper echelons of regional management. After 15 years lording over their sad little gas station kingdom, they've become frustrated, nitpicky, bitter, and downright bitchy towards their staff and customers, because what else are they going to do? Recently, one of our direct competitors absorbed another smaller local distributor and as a result ended up biting off a little more than they could chew. Too many new deliveries and too many new products made the skeleton crew they'd run on for years all but collapse. Seasoned drivers, who I've known and worked alongside for years, began dropping like flies. As a result, the company began hiring anything with a pulse and a commercial driver's license. Cooler started becoming messy as product wasn't condensed, was being put in the wrong spot, or just left on the floor entirely. Well, last Tuesday rolls around, and it's once again my time to endure the weekly 30 minutes of hell. I roll up to the gas station and truck in my five carts worth of product. As always, Karen's totally displeased with the order that the salesman placed, and she okayed just yesterday. So I ensure the requisite five minutes of bitching while she checks the order in. I'm wheeling the first cart away after the check-in when I hear Karen's shrill voice come 
quacking through the cooler door. Clean up your crap. I have inventory tomorrow. I've been doing this for years, and I take great pride in my work and customer service. I'm super anal about organization and product rotation, and I've developed quite the reputation amongst my customers as the one guy you don't have to babysit. Everyone but Karen agrees. I get in and get out. My drinks are condensed and organized by product and expiration date. I cut no corners. Well, on this day, I had a small order, was running a bit ahead of schedule. So after putting all my product away, I spent another 20 minutes or so cleaning and organizing the other guy's mountain of product. By the time I was done, I'd amassed a huge stack of broken down cardboard and shrink wrap from all the product he had haphazardly thrown on the shelf. I was somehow able to cram all this trash into the one box that I myself had brought in and headed out. Of course, Karen's there waiting in the back room while she does her reviews for the upcoming inventory. Karen, geez, took you long enough. Me, yeah, I took a bit of time cleaning and organizing your cooler, but it looks good in there. Well, it better after all the time you spent in there. I've been waiting on you. I still have to do my cooler reviews. I toss the box full of cardboard on the pile by the back door and start heading out. Um, excuse me, company policy says you have to take your own trash out. Now I'm not a spiteful guy, quite the opposite actually. I'm usually quite chipper and polite. Something about her smugness and lack of appreciation finally just made me snap. I turn around, walk to the trash pile, grab the box full of cardboard, and without breaking eye contact, I turn it over and vigorously shake its contents all over the floor. Cardboard and shrink wrap went everywhere. I had really packed that crap in there, and it took a bit of effort to get it all out. This is the only box I brought in, and you should know you scanned it in. The other crap is your trash. I cleaned up in your cooler. Have a nice day. The combined look of rage and smugness on her face as I walked by with a crap-eating grin was enough to make the rest of my day. I told my boss about it when I got back at the end of the day. He got a good chuckle out of it since everyone else hates her as well. Of course, she called and complained, but of course my boss only responded with, well, he did what you told him to do. Nothing I can do about it. Sorry. I love my company. Delivery guy like you is a godsend. Never, ever F with the guys who take pride in their work. And our next story. I pay rent. So I own this house. Backstory. My parents used to own a house on a big lot. When my older siblings went away for college, the house felt too big for our needs, so my parents decided to sell the house. But not all the land. They built a smaller house on the part of the land they didn't sell. A few years after, we moved to a city two hours away and kept the house as a place to go during the summer. My parents decided to rent the house as it was well located and had a really nice view. Renting it meant they could use the money towards the mortgage and taxes. Enter our Karen. Karen and her boyfriend rented the place so she could be closer to her work. From the start, my dad made it clear the place was for rent, and my parents planned on living in that house after retiring. At that time, both of them planned to work for at least another 20 years plus. They would, of course, notify Karen in advance when they wanted to take back the house so she would have plenty of time to find a new place. In return, they asked that she notify them in advance should she wish to move out so they could find a new renter. The lease also stated that my parents would have some of their things in a locked storage in the basement as well as in a shed on the property and that they would always call Karen before dropping by to get something out of the storage, which was in the basement and connected by the garage, so they wouldn't even disturb Karen. For a few years, Karen was an okay renter. She paid the rent through a check each month, she smoked inside and didn't take care of the land, but my dad didn't make a fuss about it. Real trouble started after around 12 years. Every few months, Karen's checks would bounce back. My dad would call her to ask about it. Karen would profusely apologize and rectify the situation. Then it became every other month until it was every month. Finally, my dad had enough and called her about the lease and the rent. During the call, Karen argued that since she'd been paying rent for the past 12 years, the house was now hers. My dad was shocked since that came out of nowhere. He tried to explain to her that she was renting the place like they had agreed on since the beginning. Karen went on a bitch fit about how she had paid so much over the years 
and she was the one living there and taking care of the place, which she was not at all, therefore it should be hers. She threatened to take my dad to court. Now, where I live, there are many laws which protect the renter, and it can be a real bitch to deal with when you have a nasty renter. My dad hired a lawyer to make sure everything was in order. After a meeting with Karen, where the lawyer was present, she realized she didn't have much of a case since all paperwork concerning the house was in my dad's name and the original lease clearly stated that it was a rental. My dad offered her to stop renting should she wish to after the whole debacle, but she wanted to stay in the house. He made her sign a new lease where it stated again that this was a rental and that she should not pay or cause trouble again. My dad would give her the shortest possible notice of eviction allowed by law. Karen is still renting the house after almost 20 years. My parents are not close to retiring yet. Do hope it won't turn into a crap show when they decide to take back the house. And our last story. Enjoy the scenic ride up to the 14th floor. I work in a 16 floor building with all different offices. Unfortunately, the elevators are notoriously slow and can take up to five minutes to reach ground level. I was just entering the building when I saw two women waiting outside the elevator doors no more than 20 yards away. I was the only one entering and they both glanced at me before they quickly rushed inside the just arrived elevator. I ran for it, in heels. Fortunately, I'd managed to get there and throw my arm in just as the doors were a foot apart from closing. As I stepped in, I saw one of the women's finger clearly jabbed on the close button. So much for female solidarity. Now, I normally call out people's bad behavior by saying, that wasn't very nice, or is this the person you grew up wanting to be? But I work in China, and my grasp of the language isn't that great, so instead I just stood parallel to the woman and stared at her with pursed lips for five floors up to my office. She rolled her eyes at me, but otherwise ignored me. Fine. Well, right after I stepped out of the elevator, I threw my arm in again, and swept my hand on every damn number button I could press. From one B to another, enjoy the scenic ride up to the 14th floor. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.